Hi, and welcome to this 4NAV coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product, product specialist at 4NAV, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to look at converting an entire Seaside application to AL. The 4NAV converter can convert any type of business central object, not just reports. Moreover, it's completely free to use. To demonstrate this conversion, we'll use a few Seaside objects created just for this purpose and convert them to business central on-premise. However, this conversion process works for both on-premise and cloud extensions. To demonstrate converting an entire Seaside application to AL, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will export my Seaside objects. In step three, I will add an application baseline. In step four, I will convert all objects to AL. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will work in a Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2020 Wave, Wave 2 release. I have installed the 4NAV converter, which can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. I have also installed Visual Studio Code with the AL language extension. The first thing we need to do is export our Seaside objects to a text file. Simply filter for modified objects and export to a text file, as usual from the object designer. I've already prepared a new extension for my converted app. So to convert to export my objects, I have a Business Central 14 database uh, with uh, some Seaside objects. And in these Seaside objects, I have the, uh, a modified sales header, uh, a custom code unit, and a modified sales order. In the sales header, I will just uh, quickly design it. I have a an extra field, the my field, and in the code. In the on modify, I have added um, some code to trigger if uh, my field is empty, I get a message. So nothing, uh, nothing too drastic, but enough to show you how this conversion works. Then in the code unit, I simply have an event subscriber on before release sales doc, which does a with sales header do. And of course the with uh, do construction needs to be removed before business central 18. So we are going to look at that as well. And finally in the sales order, if I design this, you will notice I have, the, I have added the my field uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the first group in the content area. So fairly simple and straightforward as this is just a simple, uh, simple demonstration. I'm going to export these to a text file. And I will export them straight into my extension, which we will look at later on. And there we go, that's all I need to do. Just looking at the extension that I'm going to be using. Uh, this extension is, uh, is fairly simple. It just has an app.json and I have my ID range uh, set quite widely for this demo. And in this extension, I have a table that I've prepared earlier and I have compiled the extension to an app file. I need, uh, in order for an for app conversion to work, I need an object in my extension and I need it to be compiled. Uh, I need the app file for the 4NAV converter to read the, uh, the table information. After we have exported our modified objects, we also need to create an application baseline. This will serve as a comparison so the conversion can separate modified objects to extensions. You can do this by simply opening a standard database on the, of the same version you are converting and exporting all objects to a text file. As this is a time consuming process, I've prepared this earlier. I've just opened a BC uh, standard Business Central application in the object designer, exported all objects to a text file. And what I ended up with is this. If I open this, you will notice it is simply a text file which contains all of the objects in Business Central. Finally, we will convert the objects using the 4NAV converter. 
I will also use the new width removal. This feature is available from 4NAV version 5.4. So let's go to the 4NAV converter. And in the 4NAV converter, I need some, uh, some setup first. The first thing is I need the connection string for my symbol information. And if I drill down into this, you will notice that uh, I've given my connection a name, uh, which makes it easy to find uh, connections you've made earlier. Then my NAVO Business Central version, you will notice I can convert to any version above NAV 2013. Business Central 17 is my uh, Business Central of choice today. And my connection type this time is a local extension project. And my local extension project is simply the extension folder that I've uh, where my extension is. Once I've done this, I can test it. My settings are valid. So all is good. And for the input file, for the input file, I will simply use the app.txt that I've exported earlier. And the output file is the extension base folder. And I use star.al uh, because I want Fornav to name these objects for me. My target for now version is uh, irrelevant because I'm not converting reports right now. And my NAV compatibility is Business Central on-prem. Obviously, when you use Business Central Cloud, uh, the conversion takes care of things like uh, DLL, DLLs and stuff, uh, stuff like that. It will just give you warnings if there are DLLs. For on-prem, uh, all of this works fine. Then in the advanced tab, I, have, I am just going to use a couple of uh, features. I'm going to use the fixed implicit width and remove explicit width. Like I said earlier, we have a, a width in the code unit. And of course, we have the uh, the width in the pages uh, that need to be converted. So I'll let Fornav take care of that. I want to split the, the output to one file per object because obviously in my extension, I need one file per object. And then the application baseline objects. This is the baseline that Fornav uses to uh, to compare the objects to the to the to the baseline to the standard objects. Uh, I've modified my table 36. So during the conversion, Fornav is going to compare my uh, object table 36 to the standard object table, th table 36 and split out uh, my modifications. And then finally, the next extension object ID, that's going to be the first uh, object ID of any table and page extensions that Fornav is going to create. Once I'm done with this, everything is set up, I can hit convert. And this takes a little while because Fornav now needs to convert the text files to AL files. And once that's done, I can view the log. And in the log, I can see um, table 36, page order 40. Two, uh, sales header, sales order, and I have some code units. Conversion is completed. So all happy with that. And let's have a look at what we've ended up with. In my extension, I will notice I have uh, three new objects. The first one is the, uh, the code unit. And the code unit, let's save it to get everything in the right place. In the code unit, you will notice that my width has been removed and I now have, uh, I don't have the width, I just have if sales added up my field and I have the sales added up table caption and I have sales added up field caption. So that's been fixed and that is great. For my page, for my sales order, uh, you will have noticed that I had uh, just added an extra field on the page and Fornaf has found that and split it out into a new page extension, which is sales order and of course, I need to rename this with the, with the new naming conventions, but that's all I need to do. And on the page, Fornaf has also removed the uh, the width that is implicit in the in the page. So I now just have rec.myField instead of the my field that uh, Business Central creates by default. Finally, I have the sales header, and the sales header obviously needs a name as well, so I'm going to do so. We'll call it red sales header. Then I have my extra field, which is right here. Uh, it's just a simple field, uh, which is uh, the data classification is to be classified because that wasn't in my 
uh, in my original object. And then we have something uh, tricky. We have an unsupported feature code insertion on, on modify. The problem with these on modify triggers is that we have a number of ways to use these on modify triggers in, uh, in Business Central table extensions. We can use either the, uh, the on modify that we've, uh, that we've all, always known, but we can also use, if I uh, delete this, we can use the uh, on after modify or on before modify. So I'll change this to on before modify. And let's save my code. And that's all I need to do. My, uh, my Seaside application is now converted and I can publish it to Business Central which brings up my business central docker uh, docker image and after it's taken a while to set up you will notice i am on the sales orders page which i did on purpose because of course i'm working with sales orders right now so i have a my field right here and i can add some data in there and for the big check, we have the unmodify that said if the my field is empty, I get a message. So I'm going to empty my field. Then I get the message, my field is empty. It's all very simple, but it, hopefully it gives you a good idea of what the FourNav conversion can do. So let's recap what we just did. The first step to converting our application is exporting the modified objects. Then we export an application baseline, the standard objects from the same Business Central version. Finally, we run, we run the 4NAV converter to convert our objects. Thank you for listening to, to me so far. I see we have no questions at the moment. If you do have any questions, please let us know and we will uh, answer them before the end of the webinar. If you want to know more about 4NAV or download 4NAV, please visit the 4NAV website. If you want to use 4NAV in Business Central Cloud, you can download it from the Microsoft App Source. And if you want to watch more of these videos, uh, please visit the 4NAV YouTube channel. And if you have any questions after this webinar is over, uh, please send them to support at 4NAV.com. For a list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit 4NAV.com slash coffee break. Uh, we will be doing these uh, coffee breaks for uh, a while longer and if you have any topics for future four and a half coffee breaks please let, let us know uh, and if we decide to do a coffee break about your topic you win two prizes the first of course is a coffee break about your topic and the second one is a 50 euro or dollars gift certificate as a thank you with that we still have no questions so thank you very much for listening and i will see you in the next coffee break goodbye